we are a small school. We use that to our advantage, taking a project-based learning approach to design personal learning experiences that challenge our students. This year's project, Designing Renewable Energy Systems, was our most ambitious project yet. Students had to design and build an outdoor eco-classroom from scratch to be used for science and environmental education initiatives in our school community. Students also had to explore renewable energy systems, designing solar, wind, and biofuel systems to provide power to our eco-lab. This project required the talents and brain power of every one of our students in grades 4 through 12. For 10 months, we have been challenged and pushed to our limits. Our success depended on every student and staff member of our school, collaborating effectively and putting in their best effort. Because we worked so well together, we achieved much more than we could have as individuals. Our school community worked with a high degree of collaboration, with no hierarchy. Fourth graders worked and learned alongside tenth graders, who worked alongside teachers, who learned alongside community experts. The project taught all of us important lessons in math and science, but also and perhaps more importantly, in teamwork, collaboration, and other skills necessary for success, not only in school, but in university and the work world as well. This is the story of our learning journey this year, designing renewable energy systems. Yeah, when I'm ready for you. Yeah, I'm not really too far. No, it has to be 37. What? So then we will have to make this a bit longer. Yeah, we have to move this one over just a bit. We have to move it two inches in. Uh, we the Eco Classroom has been designed by the junior and senior high students. The classroom is designed to take advantage of natural light and will use active and passive solar heating. The grade 9 students use their trigonometry skills to design the vaulted ceiling trusses. The junior and senior high CTS classes learn the skills for floor, wall, and roof construction during the construction of the eco classroom. During the construction of the Eco Classroom, it was amazing to see the students working with a high degree of collaboration to apply very difficult and complex math concepts that they would learn in class to a real world project. The creation of the Eco Classroom was the first step in our project. It gave us an outdoor learning space that all of our students and the community will be able to use for years to come. In addition, it's an important part of our renewable energy project because it gives us a space to test the renewable energy systems that all of our students are creating.
Team Solar was made up of students in grades 5, 6, 9, and senior high. They were responsible for designing and creating a solar array that operated at maximum efficiency throughout the year. They began their project by attending Lakeland College, where they learned about solar arrays from Rob Barron, lead instructor from Lakeland Center for Sustainable Innovation. After the Lakeland field trip, the grade nine students met regularly and shared what they learned with each other, using this information to create the initial designs for their prototype solar arrays. Students noticed that their designs looked a lot like a grain auger, and so they set out to see if they could find one for their project. They were able to find one from a local farmer who also had a keen interest in renewable energy. The senior high students took the final design from the nines and began transforming the grain auger into a dual tracking solar array that followed the sun from east to west and could be adjusted for seasonal solar angles. The grade five and six students played a key role in the success of teen solar, especially early on. They had to research the average amount of daily sunlight throughout the different seasons. They tracked the times of sunrise and sunset throughout the school year, as well as daily weather conditions, including the amount of daily sunlight. They also had to calculate the changing angle of the sun in the sky during different times of the day and year. I am a part of the wind team and we are trying to find the best turbine and best tower to power our outdoor eco classroom with using only wind. The grade 8 class was part of Team Wind. After learning about wind as a source of renewable energy, we had to design and build our own mini wind turbines. They had to produce enough energy to charge a cell phone. After testing different designs, we had to pick the best design to make a larger wind turbine that could provide power to our outdoor classroom. The project was really fun. We got to learn by doing lots of hands-on activities. We got to build things in shop, use 3D design and 3D printers to test different wind turbine designs. We got to apply what we learned in the classroom to a real-life project. Team Wind was made up of grade 7 and 8 students as well as senior high CTS students and grade 5-6 classes. The grade 7s contributed by designing and building the tower for the turbine that could be raised and lowered as maintenance on the turbine was required. The grade 8s designed and built the wind turbine with feedback from the grade 7s. The grade 7 and 8 classes worked really well throughout the project. The students had to collaborate through the project and they demonstrated excellent teamwork in combining their designs to make a turbine that would suit our needs. They all knew what the goal was and dedicated themselves to finding a solution to each new problem they came across. For example, before making the final turbine, the 7s and 8s combined to, to build smaller turbines that test 
tested their efficiency and effectiveness. A popular design was a turbine with long blades which stood vertical instead of the traditional look of a wind turbine. After much debate and testing the designs, they realized that this design would not suit the needs for the amount of wind we saw on a regular basis in Murnau. This information came from the grade five, six classes data they collected about the number of windy days and intensity of the wind specifically in our school grounds. Students use their test results to guide them in the design of their final larger turbine. The grade fours joined the grade 10 class as part of Team Biofuel. They helped to research some wastes that could be used to create biofuel, which could help provide power to an outdoor science lab being constructed by some of our junior and senior high students. The grade four students researched, alongside the grade 10s, some wastes such as manure, potatoes, compost, vegetable oil, canola oil, and corn. During the research process, students also explored the viability of using these types of waste in our area to create energy. They also had the opportunity to visit Highland Feeders, a farm that used manure in operating one of North America's largest anaerobic digesters. As the project progresses, the grade fours are looking forward to collecting the waste that will be used to fuel the biogas digester prototype being created. I think what interested the students most was not the creativity and the ingenuity involved, but the fuel source the Great Forest chose as the most efficient fuel source, manure. A high school student donated a horse trailer with manure on the floor as a free fuel source. The ENS class built an insulated box to put the whole setup inside. As the students discovered in their research that the bacteria in the manure would produce more methane quickly in a warmer environment. It was a fantastic example of how this kind of project can light up the excitement of scientific discovery in students across grade levels. Okay, so in grade 10, we decided to make a biogas digester from a video we've seen on YouTube. Um, inside this five gallon jug, we'll have cow manure and food scraps so that we can get methane gas to start a generator. So we will put everything through this tube, which will go inside to the jug. Then we'll, um, the gases will rise and come through a tube into this canister of steel wool so that it separates the H2S from the methane gas, brings the methane gas out into an inner tube so that we can later on use that to start the generator. 